Okay, everybody, I am so excited today because I am joined by Kyle Solar, aka Cyril Karn, who stars in Andor. We're going to be talking spoilers, so make sure you're caught up on Andor before you watch this interview. Kyle, how are you doing today? I'm good, dude. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's great to see you. Um, beautiful piano, by the way. I don't know if you got any playing in before this interview, but very nice. Thanks, man. It's not mine, but I look at it longingly. <laughs> you know, with admiration. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, so this is so exciting because like, you, you got to tell me what it's like being in a Star Wars project. Did you feel the most pressure on this project than anything you've done in your career before? And did you even feel nerves on set? It's certainly the biggest thing I've ever been a part of. I mean, I will say though, that when we were filming it, it was November, 2020. So like, everybody on set was just like super happy to be alive and like working. So weirdly, the nerves of undertaking something like um, uh, Andor and Star Wars, it, it, it didn't really feel as um, nervous as it does now, <laughs> to be honest, to, to have it being released into the world and being embraced by the family of Star Wars and fans and everything. And um, but we also had an amazing showrunner in Tony Gilroy, who just, I mean, his MO from the very beginning was like, we're just doing another show here. We're just doing this like socio-political drama, thriller, family, weird drama thing at the same time. It just so happens to be in space. Yeah. So we all really just kind of had that mentality. Thank God. Cause I think, I think if I, by the time, all right, like, yeah, it's not a spoiler, but by the time that we were filming a kind of episode 12 moment, um, I hadn't really seen in Cyril's journey many stock, like old school, like Star Wars characters. And there was this huge group of people milling about a massive scene and all of a sudden they parted and there was just this line of stormtroopers. And I oh, like, man. I like lost my shit a little bit because <laughs> that's when it, that's when I kind of got the nerves was like, oh, yeah, 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 this is what we're doing. Um, but yeah, luckily before that, no. Now, it's interesting, you'd mentioned just the nerves of it being out now. Do you, Are you somebody, will you go look up the Star Wars Reddit, look at fan reactions, reviews, or do you kind of think it's better to avoid that? Yeah, it's like my nightly practice, man. Like right before <laughs> I close my eyes, I see what everybody in the world says about me. <laughs> like, oh, God uh no <laughs> no okay good, no, good. i i like i really try to stay as far away from that as possible for my own mental health and yeah and and not trying to start any like chat room bl brawls you know <laughs> yeah okay so you're, you're not hiding behind like a reddit handle cool so <laughs> well i won't I say that yeah. i won't say that okay okay <laughs> All right. Um, so also, if people look at your acting experience, you have a huge amount of theater experience. Was there any moments in this show that something that would come in handy for playing this character? Saying Tony's words, man. I mean, like, mm. I, I really was surprised when I first read those scripts back in like March, February 2020. I was like, wow, this is like, this is the dude who wrote Michael Clayton. This is the dude who's like, he's been writing amazing dramas and thrillers for decades and it shows and it's it's really psychological writing. And, um, and certainly like the way that he has pitched Andor is much more about the people. It's much more human focused. And as a result, like you're in, in my experience of Cyril, like he goes home to meet his mother and that kind of turns into this weird effed up pinter play, you know, like it's, there's so much in what is not said. And so I, I, I think the writing was, you know, man, yeah, like on caliber with anything that I've done on stage. Yeah. And you mentioned too him meeting, going back to his mom's, I mean, where we're seeing him there is that would you say absolute hell for him even just being there? It's like, you know, I mean, everybody's got family, right? I mean, but imagine having to go back and live with your family, like as an adult <laughs> after losing yeah. your job. Um, 
really unceremoniously. Um, yeah, that's his absolute, like, um, is it nadir? Is that the word? The opposite of like an apex? I don't I'm not going to try it. Sounds smart, but it's the lowest <laughs> of the low for him, man. It's like, yeah, couldn't get any worse. Like that, that relationship dynamic, um, which I'm so grateful exists uh, on screen is so much an explanation of why Cyril is the way that he is and why he is so um, drawn to the movement of fascism that that the empire mm. represents. You have a very constrictive, restrictive, and oppressive home life with one dominating figure that happens to be his mother or nothing mm. ever good enough. And literally everything that Cyril prides in himself about, you know, his uniforms and the way he looks and his high level of standards, you go back and his mom's going like, that's what you're wearing for your job. <laughs> like, you, you see how the trickle down has like been morphed and twisted and turned into this like desire for power and control on a larger scale. Yeah. And it's interesting too, because you mentioned that upbringing he's had. And again, we've already seen some of this with getting more hints about his upbringing, meeting his mom and his home life. But did you also go an extra step and make a whole character backstory for Karn when you were kind of deciding how he exactly is this man who's also obsessed with just upholding law and order. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, I always tend to do that. And I spoke with I spoke with Tony at the very beginning. We're kind of like, okay, because I really wanted to know like why he was the way he was, but what he had written on the page, I was like, wow, this is so like unique for a kind of what seems to be a Star Wars villain. And um and we talked about his backstory and his mom. And he's like, maybe he meets his mom. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and bring her in. And um, but what I what I also did was, I mean, some of these stories are just now so within our collective consciousness. But I went back to the period between the First World War and the Second World War mm. and the stories of people who got swept up in these movements without fully understanding what they were agreeing to or realizing it way too late and I mean there are like yeah I mean there are hundreds of awful stories like that you know just innocent yeah people, just you know yeah T totally and it's interesting you're talking about that going back to history but also I was wondering is there any specific characters in just media or art that inspired your portrayal of Karn like was there anything you were kind of drawing from not really. I, I kind of just focused on what Tony had written in our discussions, and I trusted that that was, that was kind of enough. I mean, yeah, yeah. And, the, and then the kind of historical stuff. I didn't, I, I, like, I like using lots of different things for inspiration, but mm. I find that sometimes, like, you know, using other characters is, it's kind of useful for like an audition scenario. You're like, ah, I need a like a link in. I need a foot in to like mm. something, to something. And you're like, oh, it's kind of like this character. Maybe I do something like that. And then you, you you wind up in the middle ground of like sharing different things with that character and taking bits and leaving bits. But but with this, I like I didn't really do that. I did a bunch of other stuff, like other weird shit. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's good. And that's great advice for just auditioning in general. And interesting, too, because, again, you're talking about how good the script is and with character. And I think what's fascinating, a lot of people were talking about was with Cyril chasing Andor and failing miserably. Um, how traumatic was this really for him, especially seeing some of his coworkers die? Like what what was that trauma level you think for him in that moment? Like 11. Out of ten, <laughs> <laughs> I think you know, you know, in the lead up to landing on Ferrix, you you see him being thrust into a position of authority where he sees these mercenaries. Basically, he's like, "Oh shit! Like, is that this could get like really real? Have I gone too far? Is this worthy of the cause that I feel in my heart and in my head?" is this tactic, like, is this worthy and necessary? And then throughout that whole sequence of them running around trying to find Cassian, 
it like it just settles in further and further like this is this is bad this this we've gone way too far and then yeah like seeing coworkers being effectively i mean you in one sense could say like killed by cyril mm. he's there to like protect and uphold his loyalty to his servicemen who were killed by cassian and then he undertakes this kind of horribly botched mission and winds up killing three or four of his own guys so like yeah, uh, yeah man he's had a com- he's had a complete um fall from grace and that's one of the things that kind of attracted me about the character is like within the first three episodes he's got this like super high and then the lowest of the low i mean the yeah. opposite ends of the spectrum and then it kind of like i don't know it kind of goes from there yeah and with you saying it kind of goes from there it's interesting that when we see him at home he's still looking at this projection of cassian so i want to know if you can get us into the mindset of his obsession still there with Cassian, what, what is his motivation behind that? Why is he still thinking about him? He's thinking about Cassian because like, that is the only fire that can like keep him alive. I think while he's in his childhood bedroom <laughs> where there's only like, was it like four seconds of light a day that like <laughs> captures like that part of the apartment block in this claustrophobic, <laughs> a horrible container with his mother. And he found purpose in Cassian. Like he went above and beyond what he thought he could achieve. And yeah, he did completely fuck it up, <laughs> like <laughs> majorly hardcore. But at the same time, like it pushed him into a new level, into a new zone of being, which he had always thought he was capable of, I think, but didn't have the opportunity. And so I don't know. You know how sometimes there's like, maybe something that you've lost or, you know, whether it's a person or a relationship or a, I don't know. A, a, sure. I don't know. I don't know. Like a, a toy or like, you know, <laughs> but sometimes like you'll, you'll keep that wound open because keeping that wound open, like doesn't allow it to heal. Cause if you allow mm. it to heal, it kind of goes back into the memory and takes on a different kind of meaning. But if you keep it open, it remains raw and it actually mm. propels you to like, to feel, well, that was the right choice. No, I know that that was the right choice. Like, I'm not a screw up, like my mother says, and, and you know, the corporate security says, like, I know I was onto something. And I think he does really, really feel intuitively that there's something different about Cassian. Right. He's just on... He's on a level and also represents something like the complete opposite of what Cyril is. Cassian, in Cyril's eyes, like is this freewheeling dude who can kind of do whatever he wants and lives right. in like free and easy, stealing and getting by by the seat of his pants. And Cyril's world is so rigid and constricted that he just is so like, how can this guy exist and get away with it? Like it's obsessive. Yeah, for sure. And it's interesting because we see that state of mind he's in. And then now where we last see him getting this miserable job in a cubicle for fuel purity. So is can you kind of just give us maybe a little tease what might come next room in the sense of like, is there like, you know, a beast waiting to come out? Is he just going to sit there and lay back? Like, do you, or is there going to be crazy stuff happening is what I'm getting at. <laughs> stuff goes down, man. Stuff okay. goes down. <laughs> stuff goes down um yeah hashtag save Cyril um <laughs> like save Ferris like I believe in him uh he's gonna make it but he's he's gonna suffer a little bit more at first and I think you know the trajectory of it is really like a huge rise massive fall a kind of plateau of being shunted into this like fuel purity kind of like observation in a no-name nondescript location in Coruscant mm. He then has a, well, let's just say, as you were, as you were suggesting, like he doesn't let Cassian go. Mm. And then he attracts some interest from another character Mm. at a higher level at the ISB, crosses paths with that person and gains a new fire to kind of 
restart the whole pursuit. Oh, I like that. That that's exciting. And last question I have for you before I let you go, Kyle, is I, I what I love about this character the most is that he has clone trooper action figures in his room. Um, <laughs> so I was gonna ask you, Kyle, if you had Star Wars action figures in your room, who would you have up there? Who who would be sitting in there? Oh man, I mean, like, wow. I would definitely have the like the endor like scooter thing. Oh, like, okay. You know, like I would definitely, that was my favorite vehicle in all of Star Wars. Um, and I was, in, you know, I was a huge Han Solo, man. Like Hell yeah. my guy growing up. But I think with my, my two older brothers, so we just watched those films religiously. It was like Han and Boba Fett were like, oh, yeah. those were everybody's, weren't they? I mean, they were like yeah. these like mythic creations and yeah. A hundred percent. I love that answer. Everybody watch Kyle crush it in Andor every Wednesday on Disney plus Kyle. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope to talk to you in the future. Thanks dude. Likewise.